What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I'm editing some images that were sent in to me by Tim Orr. I'm gonna link his information down below, so definitely check out his Instagram. And thanks again, Tim, for allowing me to use your images for this video. He was running into some issues blending these shots right here. We got a Milky Way shot, and we have our Twilight image. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did this to create the photo right here. And uh, jumping back to the Milky Way shot, let's just take a look at the settings. He shot this with a 14 millimeter lens at f1.8, ISO 3200, and a shutter speed of 20 seconds. If we zoom in here, it's a nice and sharp silhouette. Um, the stars are trailing a little bit, and I recommend maybe trying 15 seconds in the future, and then increasing your ISO up to around 5000 or 6400. It's going to create a little bit of noise in your sky, but it's not the end of the world, especially when you're blending your foreground back in. And also, if you do some stacked images, you could reduce that noise and have sharper stars. So definitely play around with like a 15 second exposure in the future. Now jumping over to our twilight shot, we can see there's a little bit of movement here. I'll jump back and forth so you can see again. So that means the tripod or the camera got bumped a little bit. Now it's not the end of the world, we could fix this up with auto align and Photoshop, but I definitely recommend bringing a plastic bag so that we could fill it with rocks or dirt and hang it from your tripod to help you know stabilize it. You could also use your camera bag as well. And another great thing that you can invest in is a remote trigger that will connect to your phone via an app. So for example, I use the Foolography uh, Unleashed app and that allows me to make changes on my camera by just using the app instead of touching the camera and you know having to worry about bumping it. So that's great when you're doing blended long exposure shots like this. Now taking a look at the settings for the twilight photo, we're at ISO 64, 14 millimeters, f1.8, 1 500th of a second shutter speed. Now I definitely recommend stopping down your lens during your twilight shots to at least f4. This is gonna help bring back some corner to corner sharpness and remove some of the vignetting. If you could get it down even further to like f5 or f8, um, that's much better because it's just gonna give you that much sharper of a foreground shot. It's not the end of the world. This uh, 1.8 lens is still really sharp. If we zoom in here, yeah, you can see it's these trees are nice and sharp. You just lose some of the sharpness here towards the sides. And don't worry about pushing the ISO up a little bit or lowering that shutter speed unless there's something in the foreground that's moving really fast like tall grass and you want it to be sharp then I understand keeping that number higher for your shutter speed but you could also increase the ISO a little bit most cameras you know they're still really clean up to ISO 400 um, so I wouldn't worry about pushing that up a little bit all right so let's get into the editing so we can blend these two shots together we'll start with this twilight photo since we're on it we want to warm this up. I'm going to take out some contrast. Increase my shadows. And lower my highlights all the way. I'm going for a very flat look because starlight is typically very flat. I'm not gonna mess around with any sliders right here at the moment. We can save that towards the end. Let's keep scrolling down. If we want to, we could sharpen this a little bit. It's not noisy, so I don't have to worry about that. Remove chromatic aberrations. And we'll click that as well. And lastly, I just want to remove some of that blue in the sky. Do like minus 60. Alright, so that looks pretty good. It's still a little bit on the cool side, but we could always make these changes later. Let's jump over here to our stars. I'm going to increase my shadows. And take out some contrast. Increase my whites. Bring in some clarity for the stars. As well as some saturation and vibrance. We could always add more later. Not to worry about all this color noise because we're going to replace this. But you know what, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit just in case my blend isn't perfect. So let's remove some noise. 
as well as the color noise. And we'll sharpen a little bit as well. All right, and now let's just make this a little bit cooler since we have to blend it with a little bit cooler foreground. So we're gonna change the temperature here. And this is just to get the blend. The final image, we could always warm it up or go cooler. It's all personal preference. But this is just to kind of match this foreground with this foreground as best as possible. All right, let's bring that back a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is just increase this a little bit more. Now let's bring this this way. And if the greens are a little flat here, we could always go to our hue and just dial this in a little bit, as well as go to our green saturation. All right, so that's pretty good. I didn't go crazy bright for the foreground. You see some people do that. I don't want to make it look like it's daytime. So I still want to keep it relatively dark. And let's open these two images up in Photoshop. So go to Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and I'm going to make a copy of these images. Now there's a couple different ways you can blend your sky and your foreground with different types of masks. This uh, particular image, I think it's just going to be the easiest for me to just paint in my foreground. But before I do that, let me grab these two images and go to Edit auto align layers. I'll leave it on auto and hit OK. We could hide one to see how well it did. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's create a layer mask. Grab my paintbrush tool and make sure it's on black. I'll make it 100% and Hardness, 65, that's okay. We'll increase the brush size. Obviously, you can use shortcuts for this as well. And I'm just going to start painting away the foreground. Now, if you want to see what you're doing, just hit the backslash key. And see if you missed any areas. You can use your bracket keys to make the brush smaller and get pretty close to the edge. All right, so I'm gonna turn that off. And now I'm just gonna zoom in. And with a smaller brush, going to get pretty close to this edge. So this is going to take me about two minutes, so I'm just going to play some music really quick. All right, so now what we want to do is go to our burn tool because we have some areas that are a little bright on this hill and so the blending might look a little bit off because of the lighting. So clicking on the bottom layer, which is our foreground layer, we want to darken that up. So let's darken up the shadows as well as our highlights and midtones.
And then since our foreground and our sky layer is a little bit darker, we could go to image adjustments, shadows and highlights. And increase our shadows a little bit. Don't worry about the sky getting a little bit brighter. My main focus is making sure this ridge line is matched in brightness with the foreground. So it was a little bit dark, so I had like a little dark edge. This basically leveled that out so you don't really see it anymore. So now it looks pretty good. I hit OK. All right, so now we have a nice blend with the foreground and our sky. And we could flatten the image and do more work on that. Obviously, don't flatten it if you plan on doing more work separately for your sky and your foreground, but I think they are good blended right now. So I'm going to make a copy. And now at this point, you can do whatever editing that you're a fan of. So I like to do some dodging. So I'm going to dodge my highlights. And then I also like to burn my shadows. So let's switch that over. I like to keep it at 1%, nothing too major and just go into the main part of the core. And I'm going to increase the brush size and just kind of sweep across the whole image. I'm gonna make another copy. If you have color effects, like uh, Nick color effects, this is a great time to do that. The skylight filter is great to warm it up a little bit. So I'll keep that around 5% and I'll do add filter. I like to use glamor glow. And let's increase the saturation. And I don't like to go crazy heavy with the glow. I keep it around 30% or less. And here I can warm it up if I wanted to as well. We'll hit OK. All right, so here's the before and here is the after. And I just like the way that comes out. So I'm going to flatten this, exit out, hit save. All right, so here we are in Lightroom and I'm just going to fix the crop. So Go to four by six, crop in a little bit. And here we could create an S curve, or you could also just increase the contrast. I typically like to use gradient filters um, just because a lot of times I want to bring more contrast into the sky and not so much the foreground. I'm trying to keep this relatively illuminated since we did all that work to try and brighten it up. If you go too hard with the contrast or an S curve, you can see like you can make that really dark down there. Um, and it doesn't really look too good when you go to print that image. So um, it's kind of, you know, it's personal preference. Just be a little sparing when you're doing your S curve. If you're trying to print this out and not have your foreground be completely black and silhouetted, um, just like I said, be cautious with your contrast. All right, so again, a lot of this is personal preference. Do whatever makes you happy. Thanks again to Tim for sending me this image. It's a great shot, and have a good day, guys. Hopefully this helps. Bye-bye.